Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Renzo here. Okay, I'm gonna paint the still life with acrylics. You can find uh, the link to the photograph in the description box. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Just gonna start. Oh, I'm gonna mention the colors I have here. I got titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red. I'll move this a little bit up. Uh, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and the last one is Mars black. Okay. See, I have this bottle with water, always to spray water to keep my palette wet. You know that I use the same canvas, a portion of the canvas as a palette. Okay. Hello, Bob. Hello, Marius. Okay, let's begin. I got the photograph to my left. Let's see. I'm going to start just with... Um, hmm. Okay, uh, let me see. I'm gonna start sketching the okay first. I'm gonna use just white, a bit of white. Okay, this is gonna be my limit for mixing my colors to my right. Okay, I'm gonna make uh, this orange a little bit bigger, like that. Uh, Okay, I think something like that is gonna be okay. Okay. I'm just sketching really fast. Just white and a bit of water. I'm gonna change a few things. Okay. Like for example, uh, you know, I'm gonna make the this orange a little bit more rounded. Okay. I'm gonna move this one a little bit to the right, and or maybe I don't know if I'm gonna paint this one. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a bigger brush. Just white. Okay. Oh, thank you, Ra Rai Jonas. Jonas. Yeah. Hola, Miriam. Okay. I'm painting the, I don't know the name of this um, white, well let me look for the name of the, oh no, I don't know, i just continue painting. Somebody help me out if somebody knows how how do you call this white thing on, on, on the slices. Okay. I'm thinking about contrast right now, okay? Uh, I'm gonna stop uh, just a bit and thinking, hey, maybe I should, you know, make everything a little bit uh, darker, let's say. I was thinking about contrast, okay? Shadows a little bit darker. Okay, what if I just pick up orange and blue? The idea is get brown, okay? A touch of camion red. And I have a brownish color here. I pick up water. Let's see. This is gonna be a shadow here. Let's see if we make everything a little bit darker. As I continue and you know I'm thinking, hey, you know, uh what about warm and cool contrast? What I mean by that is 
at some point I want to mix uh, violet and paint the shadow with a little bit of you know purple or violet here okay I got that in mind I uh, just sharing uh, what else about you know adding some transparency what you usually do is just make add more saturation on the shadows okay uh, that's definitely for sure I'm gonna do that okay and the one thing I gotta control I mean uh, it's not like all of the end all of the shadows here are gonna be just pure orange with a lot of saturation I'm gonna try to select some of them maybe just this one here maybe this one here okay okay let's see oh Bob drinker is Bob drink water he's saying can we have some more stories of the art school you attended oh yeah oh yeah I'm trying to remember <laughs> yeah Hello, Nalan. Eh. Nalan is saying, watching to see how you will paint the translucent oranges. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure I'm going to try to get that. Uh, that's pretty common when if you check out paintings of, you know, like this. Uh, that's pretty common. I'm going to do something that, let's say, that's kind of common is and is you know add saturation to the shadows okay the shadows are not gonna be darker I'm gonna be lighter a little bit lighter and more saturated than the photograph that guarantees the translucent shadow just is the same effect that we have when we block the sun with our hand and we see between our fingers this reddish color pre-saturated color is just the same okay okay I'm just thinking about the stories of the school of art I got so many I gotta just select the ones that I, can, I could tear. Okay. I'm gonna mix just white. Oh, I'm gonna use a different brush. Okay, I'm gonna keep this one for the orange. I'm gonna mix white and black, touch of black. Hello, Monique. Just mix brown again, okay? Orange and blue, and a touch of red. I 
I don't get the brown I want. I mi mix orange and black. Touch of red. Yeah, this is better. Let's see if this color works. I'm thinking right now that you know maybe a cool color would be better. But let's see. It's too early to know what's gonna work. Okay. Black and blue okay, blue and a little and crimson touch of white a little bit lighter well wow, that's too light Yeah, maybe this color is gonna work better. Mm -hmm. Okay, common choices uh, when you think about contrast. Opposite colors on the color wheel, okay? Or temperature. If you're working with warm colors or you wanna just, let's say warm colors looks warmer, you gotta pick up cool colors just to create more contrast I mean that's not gonna be like uh, the only solution I mean you can create contrast just by thinking about values like I uh, have this orange and I make it make it dark orange which is gonna be who's gonna be which is gonna be brown for the background eh? yeah that's pretty good Those contrast. Hello, Garu. <coughs> Just thinking one second, please. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add just a little crimson to the shadow. The, the beauty about uh, acrylics, you know, I can get uh, purple by obviously mixing a little and crimson in blue, or I can just put a little and crimson pure, like, like that, let it dry, and then add ultramarine blue on top. What I'm gonna get? I'm gonna get, you know, uh, purple, yeah? Hmm. I need more orange. Okay. 
I'm going to knock down this orange a bit with a laser and crimson and touch of blue. Again, orange, glycerin crimson, a touch of blue. Touch of a and crimson and more blue. I'm squinting down my eyes. Uh, I'm squinting my eyes and just thinking about values right now. What I mean is just trying to just see the shadows. Okay, for example, here's darker. Here's darker. Okay, I'm trying to get to those values here for example here's darker darker yeah okay I need to I need a darker color okay here darker Okay. Oh, happy Friday. Oh, Friday. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, for me, it feels the same. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not, you know. Yeah. Fridays, lately, I'm just going out to, to eat out with my kids, with family, with my family. Yeah. Nolan is saying, can I buy you a coffee or anything? Yeah, of course. Coffee is always welcome. You know, as a matter of fact, I got a coffee here. I got my coffee cup. I need coffee. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, Bob Drinkwater, he was asking me about stories about the School of Art. And I, I just, you know, came to my mind when, I, when we used to paint still lives. And I just started to you know, to have some like flashbacks, but not about me, you know, it's just like I don't remember exactly so clearly how I was, you know, kind of painting something, but I remember my friends, my friends' paintings. I remember funny things like uh, one of my friends going, mixing the color on the palette, you know, and getting close to the still life. And painting a little bit, let's say you have an orange, painting the orange just a touch to see if he match the color. If he he got the right color, he went, you know, really fast to his painting and paint that area. And then repeat that process like a thousand times, you know. And you can just, you were there just painting the still life. And every time that you were just trying to look the still life, you see him just doing that. And and we, when he started to do that, he started to get some results, you know, like, hey, yeah, that's for real, you know, you got the color, but something is not okay. You know, you see that the his painting was pretty nice. You got the colors, wow. 
all of that effort just mixing and go going back to going to the still life and painting a little bit of you know of every object you know some uh, maybe a couple of times he was told like hey I stop doing that you know you you're already changing the color of the object you know by adding so many brush strokes but one thing that we didn't know at that time because that was the first year of the school of art it was like we shouldn't be so worried about matching colors you know because it's it's about matching values okay? and the thing is that you can see some areas of his painting looking pretty nice like wow you got the color you know you nailed it but anyway the painting looks a little bit off and we didn't know why and it was just v about values he was just you know if the value it was wasn't okay you know a portion of an area of the the orange or whatever he was painting he feels a little bit off and then with with time we learned that yeah? we need to pay attention to values let's say first and second the co color obviously uh that's the way to say it for to practice to teach to you know but color and value is just one thing you cannot separate values from colors you cannot do that it's just one thing okay And when you see me doing that, basically it's a combination of that, you know. Try to get the form at the same time, try to get the colors and obviously values. And obviously the, it's, uh, that's the tricky part because we're not going to be so perfect when it's about matching values. We're going to realize that something should be a little bit darker, something should be a little bit lighter. Got here, Alisa and Crimson. You know, and there was another friend. I remember that he was like, he was painting always with a lot of color. It's just like it. He never mixed the paints. He had, he had a lot of tubes of paint, and that was pretty nice. You know, you can see his paint is just glowing like with. A lot of color. Man, that was pretty nice. But uh, when you got too much color and you don't have some areas like your eyes can rest, sometimes it was kind of difficult to keep watching his paintings for a long time because it was just an explosion of color. And then with time we learned that we need some areas where our eyes aren't going to rest just to continue kind of watching the, the image, the painting, the picture. Now that I'm making this darker, now I can add a little bit of orange here and maybe this orange is going to glow a little bit more. And it's too light. I'm going to mix it with coming red. I'm going to repaint this again. Okay, now I can create more contrast here. I'll, go, I'll be back here just to, you know, continue adding this to the point that I see it's working. Maybe I'm going to just move through, make it reddish or make it orangey.
they got a Lucerne Green song, another touch of black. It's a tiny touch of black. I wanna see this a little bit darker. <clears throat> Hello Domingo. Hello Ben. Oh no, let me see. I didn't see link. Oh, oh, oh my God. So sorry. Yeah, I don't have the link on. <laughs> the view. Yeah. yeah. Here's the link. I'm just thinking right now that I want to see more contrast. Okay. Getting closer to the edge, and I'm trying to, I'm not trying to do to do this like going like that, like very precise. I'm trying to to have a soft edge, but going lightly. You see the pressure with my brush? It's not like I'm doing this, okay? It's just like that. white to make this grayish and as you can see and I'm not gonna paint this portion here as you can see I'm choosing more uh, for uh, temperature contrast okay this is blue with black and this is grayish bluish grayish the orange is orange yeah what it is it's pretty obvious what i'm trying to do is you know adding more color or more contrast just using cool color against a warm color I remember when I got uh, my first girlfriend in the School of Art. It was pretty nice, you know, it was pretty young, but I just basically, uh, I know, I mean, kind of, kind of stopped painting, like, uh, you know, I just was paint, I was painting just like uh, fun, 
the hours that I supposed to paint and and then it was just to hanging around with my friends with my girlfriend which is pretty nice too but and then when I was alone again I was painting like crazy like and I don't know like six hours every day and drawing at night for three hours every every day it's a lot of training in the school of art Well, I got a coffee <coughs> hey, for uh, Bob Drinkwater. Thank you so much. And you know, uh, even that I got already a couple of coffees, I'm gonna drink one more coffee as soon as I finish up the live stream. It's just like I have to. <laughs> I got a Starbucks pretty close. You know, it's pretty close. The problem that to get there here is just like <laughs> is it, if you walk, it's gonna be like six blocks. Let's say, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, no, six or seven blocks. You pick up a car. It could take you by maybe twenty minutes to get there because I live in downtown and it's pretty crowded. And if I walk, it's pretty crazy. Because pretty crowded, you can just, you know, you you walk slowly to cross the streets. It's just a mess. It's, it becomes kind of a dangerous thing, just crossing the street. And I prefer to go to a Starbucks that is a little bit away from from here. But I get that Starbucks faster. But at the end, is I mean, I would say that it's, it's, it's closer, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll continue uh, checking out values. Yeah, I'm gonna just, um, I mean, I'm gonna add more Alicia and Crimson. I remember once when I was painting a still life when I was a student, the teacher asked for two yellows, a lemon yellow and a camion yellow. I just have one yellow, camion yellow. And we were painting something that for sure we should, you have to use a lemon yellow. And I didn't have it. And I painted that object. It was, I think it was a piece of bread. And I painted that and I didn't match the color. And at that time, it was the first year of the School of Art, I was, I was just so focused on getting the color. And I pick up my palette knife and, you know, take out, take out all the paint. And the teacher was like, what are you doing? And I didn't get the color. And he was like, okay. And I was like, I'm going to paint it again. And he was, yeah, yeah, good, good, yeah, good spirit, yeah, go ahead. And then I did paint it. And I didn't get the, get the color again because, I mean, I didn't get the color on my palette. And the teacher, he didn't even pay attention to my palette. And I painted, and he was like, yeah, it looks good. And I picked up my palette knife and I did it again. He was like, what are you doing? Why again? It's not the color. But it's good, you know, I, I read it as a bread. It's good. No, 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 I just want to match the color. He was like, I did that three times. And then he was like, oh, show me your palette. You know, what colors? I mean, where's the lemon yellow? I don't have it. And how are you not supposed to get that color if you don't have it? You need at least two yellows. Lemon yellow, camion yellow, two reds. Camion red, Alicia and Crimson, two blues, cerulean blue and ultramarine blue, and then black and white. That was the basic palette 
that he was asking for. And for some reason I didn't get, I didn't have, I, it looks like I forgot the color of my house maybe. Because it's, it's not like I didn't have them. I mean, I used to have a lot of colors because my, my mom, he, he was a painter, you know. I took the paintings from my mom and she used to have a lot of colors. But I don't know, maybe that day it was just like, I'm going to take just these colors. Check out the brush stroke, check out the pressure, okay, and just working with the tip of the brush. And if you got a sharp edge, pick up a clean brush with a little bit of water and then work on the edge. You know edges that's gonna be the more Maybe annoying thing when you, we paint with acrylics. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to have your cake and need it to. Okay. Oh, Bob Jim Warren saying coffee frappuccino is the best. Yeah, yeah, frappuccino is with uh, with ice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink that as soon as I get better with my allergic. Yeah, thank you so much, Bob. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, what else about the school of art about painting still lives the process of teaching I think it was pretty good that's for sure because it's, it wasn't just about putting still life you know 
it takes the student through a process of uh, first it was just about painting black and white objects pretty simple black and white like a sphere, a cone you know, a box and then from there they add an orange a banana, something with color and then you got a sphere, a white sphere a white box and an orange and always, always with a lot of contrast Okay, you always have some really strong light and then they start to add a fabric okay if somebody practice at home you can try to do that a fabric which is, is going to be could be white sometimes or black or gray three values you know and then and then the next still life was with a red fabric for example and a green apple and then you see what you got there contrast And then they start to move from simple opaque objects because everything was about something opaque and they, they add something a jar a metal jar with a lot of shiny areas and all of that and then next class a, a, you know a cup of glass and yeah, it was pretty nice I didn't get all the process when I was a student, for me it was just like, oh, a new still life, oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, this one looks better than the other, yeah. When I started to teach, things, when, then is when I realized about that. When I started to teach, it was like, I saw the curriculum, it was like, this is the order. You gotta follow the order. It was like, wow, it looks pretty nice, you know, like a nice structure. Yeah. And you ended up painting uh, glass, fabric, fruit, you know. And they put you, for example, a peach, which is pretty soft. And then a metal object, which is shiny, and glass, just to see the difference between the textures. And then when the student is in front of the jury, at the end, you know, of the year, the ev evaluation or, you know, what the teacher takes into consideration is the difference between textures. If the student was able to capture the difference, that was pretty clear, you know, when you don't see that difference. Okay, I think my orange here is uh, dark enough. I want to start in some lights here. I'm adding a little, a little bit of. I'm gonna add more yellow to the mixture to get some brightest uh, lights. I'm gonna add more white. White and black, I need black. <coughs> I would suggest that if you paint at uh, somebody paints at home, pick up different objects, always you know add a really strong light because it's going to be always about contrast why because when you add a lot of contrast you have more values and the idea was working with from the lightest light to the darkest dark
I'm adding gray. On top of this gray, I'm gonna add white. Adding more black. And I paint the paint, you know, like on the air, like one side of the brush. Even I got a little bit of the, I can see the tooth of my canvas because I'm not pressuring that much. Gary saying it appears like you're you've been choosing more complicated subjects lately for all your works. Okay, uh yes. I don't know. Oh thank you so much, Nolan, for the coffee. Yeah, today is my coffee day. It's Friday. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. Uh uh I was checking all their video videos on my channel and and I uh, I think I ha I, I you know maybe I think that my older paintings on my YouTube channel just like were more way more complicated than the ones that I paint today you know who knows Yeah, but painting is, is not, it's not like e an easy thing to do, I mean, it doesn't matter how much practice we have, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult to lay down a brush stroke and say, wow, that's what I wanted, that's it. No, I mean, we go over the process of retouching, retouching, adding another brush stroke and more and more and continue this process of, you know, retouching and retouching. And that's the way you know the painting works. That's why. That's why. When uh, somebody paints as a ter therapy, you know, the idea is that the paint, the, the the act of painting, is gonna cut you like in this concentration. It's not gonna be some kind of very relaxing thing. Like oh my god, I'm so relaxed. Uh, no, I mean the idea that. You're gonna be captured by this thing about painting, and you're gonna to start to realize that it's not it's not easy, and you're gonna get into this more and more to the point that at least for a couple of hours or more, you're gonna forget about everything. And you're gonna be this and this, just your painting and you, just that, and that, you know. It's just taking a rest from the rest of the world, for from what's happening around you, at least for a couple of hours. You're not gonna think about anything more. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna add more white. I'm 
making this lighter. too much white Need to step back. Squinting down my eyes, I see this is too light Need to get rid of those grayish color. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna try orange and yellow. I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'm thinking just one thing, uh, in order to see, you know, this thing about seeing translucency is about contrast, that means, see this, that, that's what I want, I'm mixing orange and coming red, this glowing, this color has to be more saturated than the colors, than the colors around, and a little bit lighter okay yeah I think that's that's good if I you lay down the brush stroke and you see that's glowing that means that everything around is darker you lay down the brush stroke it's not glowing that means that the values that are around that area okay it's not are not dark enough. Okay, now another thing that would be a knockdown uh, the saturation of the other colors. It's just like imagine that I add a glaze here. Uh, let's pick up this color here. I'll make it pretty transparent, gray. Add a glaze here, this grayish color. What happens? I'm knocking down the color here, and uh, if I knock down this color more and more this orange is gonna glow more and if I darken up everything around more and more it's gonna glow even more okay now if somebody's painting this and you don't see that the orange here you lay down the orange it's not glowing you know what's happening okay it's because color and saturation okay now that's normal it doesn't mean like hey I know I'm not doing this good I know this is not for me no 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 it's just it's the process of painting we got uh, to those that transparency those colors just slowly we just continue you know adding paint we see if it's it's not glowing, we need to darken up everything around. Yeah, it's just what we do. It's the process of painting. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to make a uh, glow uh, this here, here. And what about here? Well, maybe. I don't see that this is glowing. That means that the values that are closer maybe are just too bright or light. Oh, Gary saying, seems like lemon yellow might be a good addition to palette. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hello, Mary. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. Do something. Let's make this more yellowish here. And reddish here. I mean, that's what I see on the photograph. Pure red. I don't know the red here, let me try this red. Let's see which one is brighter. Now I'm gonna mix blue, a little and crimson, a touch of white.
I like I like I like this red touch of white touch of orange the glaze I like this red here and I got a glaze just water pure red more paint just one second I'm trying to keep my all my brushes wet here You know what, I'm thinking about adding more depth, you know, I'm thinking what if I make this, add a glaze and make this even darker, like knock down this upper portion, just to keep all the light here, okay, because I can see that everything has like a lot of color, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's not a good idea because, uh, yeah, uh, it's not like a lot of depth on this object, it's just one thing, you know. It's not a landscape like this is too close to me and this is like mountains far away from me. No, it's not like that. Okay. Hmm. I maybe just wanna find a way to kind of knock down some edges. Uh, just that. Okay. Mixing camion red. Sorry, this is a different green from the black. I'm adding another glaze here. Just making this darker.
<clears throat> okay. I'm gonna just uh, I have a darker color here, I think. Oh, it's too light. I want kind of making this uh, edge, you know, soft here too, a little bit here, and maybe knock down here. Yeah, I wanna uh, have the feeling that this is something rounded, and this area is, you know, is. It's turning and it's coming closer to me more than here. Okay. I don't see obviously that on the orange on the photograph. Here just um trying to think about the volume of this. Not copying the photograph, just thinking about the primary form. It's like when you're painting something that you know is round, it's spherical. Okay. At some point you're gonna think about just the primary form and how you get that, maybe exaggerate that, I don't know, it depends uh what you want. In this case I want you know that. Oh oh Mervat, yeah, uh saying we miff the palette. Yeah, and Mariam too on Instagram. Yeah, you know I'm showing the palette on YouTube. Sorry. No, I'm gonna move my camera just a bit to show the camera for Instagram. Oh, here's the palette. Look at that. Yeah, the problem with uh, Instagram is the format. You know, uh, if I make it like this, it's gonna be too small on the screen, too tiny. You can see there my, my computer to my left on Instagram, you see the photograph to my left and a, a portion of the palette, but I gotta just make it bigger like that. And when I do that obviously you all won't, won't see the palette. Okay, now when I think about the logic about a primary form, I think, hey, you know, you can make this lighter like here with pure white a touch of yellow to make it a little bit brighter okay and this is gonna pop forward okay 
uh, and uh, let's say because you see on the photograph there is white here too and you're going to put white here like that you're making this coming forward too okay which it could be okay nothing that's not good but I'm saying that right now at some point maybe you want to you know exaggerate the volume and I feel my, myself at that point where I, I want to feel that this is coming to me that uh, I don't know even you know like pumping forward like a lot I hope I could get that effect No, but the thing is, in order to make something pop, in order to make something, you know, coming forward, you need to make another areas where you see it. That's the balance. It's not gonna work just by adding light to all of that. No, I mean, you gotta make some sacrifices. Maybe you won't see that on the photograph. Okay. And... Uh, you gotta stop at some point. You, you know, I'm thinking right now. Hey, I'm gonna move with this color here. Maybe some touches in here. Uh, maybe not. But as I move to something that is closer to me, hey, I can add more white, uh, a touch of yellow to make it brighter, because white alone is lighter, but it's not bright. Okay, now, uh, obviously, these things I'm speaking of are optional. You're gonna always stay just copying the photograph, and that's it. What I'm doing, just trying to add something more. Because, as I always mention, you know, the painting is not gonna stay with the photograph next to, to say, hey, look at how good I copied this. And when <clears throat> I use a lot of information from the photograph, but when I see my painting alone, I want to see it, I want to feel the volume, I want to see that I feel that it's rounded, that the values are good, you know, that the values arrangement is good, and I can see an orange. Maybe I'm not matching the colors, yeah. One of these days I'm gonna try to match all the colors. I could need more time for that, definitely. Okay. But if I'm painting fast, definitely between choosing spending a lot of time mixing the colors and spending a lot of time matching the values you know the choice that's gonna be matching values what do you think do you, do you all think that it looks rounded uh, now about the color I can see on the photograph that it's more yellowish I can pick up right now a little bit of yellow and add a glaze and change the color. Okay? With acrylics, that's the advantage. That's a pretty, pretty nice thing that we can do.
the heat. <coughs> Mm-mm. <clears throat> Mm-mm. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Any question related to, to no, painting with acrylics? Okay, I think I'm gonna add a, a yellow glaze. Let's see. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> think you know I like it but I would love to you know uh, right now I'm, I'm still thinking about edges contrast uh, one thing that for sure I want to continue doing is adding some I want to start doing like adding some smaller details yeah, but 
the thing about that is that at the same time I want I don't want like a really soft uh, or kind of hyperrealistic painting, pre-realistic painting. I want to see some brush strokes. I want to feel some softness. And with acrylics, the only way to get that is just showing some brush strokes. Because if I try to blend it, I definitely I'm afraid that I'm going to make it kind of stiff, hard. Yeah. Oh, so uh, Mervat is saying, "Sick the background." I don't like it so much. <laughs> Beautiful, but sick the background. Yeah, yeah. I sacrifice the color of the background. Definitely, I knock down the background to no color at all. Let me think in there. Okay, let's see. You know, I want to add some pure red here in the mirror, but that, I think that would be too much. I got enough with this, this. Yeah. But maybe I should darken up everything here. I mean, knocking down the reds and keep just red here in the mirror, like glowing. Here. Yeah. I just just an idea, you know, but uh since this is gonna dry really fast. Let me let me see. No, I don't think that's that change anything. That's gonna change. No. I think it's not gonna work. To make that work, definitely I should darken up everything around. And right now, that's gonna be too much work. Yeah. For our next still life. Okay, 
I think that's it for today. Yeah. Hope you like it. Hope you all have you know learned something from it. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, yep, don't forget to press the like button. And thank you so much to Nolan and Bob, Nolan Gillen Water and Bob Drinkwater. Okay, for the coffees today. Thank you, Mo Moons Artist. Okay. Thank you, Mervat. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. See you all next time. Okay. Oh, Gary's saying, <laughs> I, I just uh, had to eat an orange right now. Yeah, you know, I was, I went out to buy groceries, and I saw some huge oranges there. I was like, oh, I, I need to eat an orange, you know, because I always drinking huge juice juice orange juice orange juice and yeah. and you know I think that that got me here and I started to look for some photograph I found an orange photograph and I have to look to looking for more and more you know I found this photograph on pixels okay okay Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, take care of you all and see you all next time. Oh, tangerine, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure, Garu, thank you so much, you know. This is not an orange, for sure, you know, I don't, I didn't know how, what was the name. That's why I keep saying an orange. <laughs> and that happened just as soon as I started the video. Uh, I said, this is not an orange. No, what's the name of this? I don't remember. That's a tangerine. Yeah. Thank you so much, girl. <laughs> anyway, when you when you'll be live next time to share one story. Oh, okay. Hey, I have so many stories when I was a student in the school of art and about my professional life as a painter too. Basically, we've got art galleries, yeah, but no, I mean, it's not like a, a lot, a lot, but I'm gonna pick up. That's pretty nice for me to remember my life. Eh, who who doesn't want to speak about its own life, you know? Speaking about my life, yeah, that bad. It shouldn't be good, you know, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> that would be like going to a therapist, okay. It could be good, who knows? Man. Okay, take care everybody. See you all next time. As soon as I say it, I gotta go, I start seeing more things to retouch
Oh, Monks, <coughs> Monks sorry, sorry, it's asking me, are you using acrylic or oil paints? Acrylic. <coughs> uh, <coughs> I said that I was, you know, going, but as usual, I'm going to stay just a couple of minutes. Oh, girl, I'm working on a board again, yeah. I bought a lot of boards on Dollar City. And I bought, you know, the fabric that I used to prepare my canvases. I got a lot of them. Yeah. I'm getting used to this board, but I mean, I I, I just want to, uh, I'm going to start preparing my own canvases again. light here. Okay, that's it. Bye.